Hey there everybody, and welcome back to more Haunting Ground. The last time we finished off the Water Tower, and we also managed to finish off Ricardo in yet another grandiose fashion by pushing him off the top of the Water Tower. And, what you know, his body is actually waiting for us down here to do a little bit of investigating. Sadly, by this point, since he is fully dead, we can actually no longer get any items off of him. The only way to get items off a per of a stalker is to actually beat them down while they are still relatively alive. And with Fiona's thoughtful observation that death is indeed painful, we are just going to make ourselves a long, long trek over this bridge that we magically manifested by finishing that diorama. The question still remains though, what is lying in wait ahead of us? What is waiting on the other side of this lake? And what we find inside is possibly the most twisted and bizarre environment we've found ourselves in yet, and that is called the House of Truth. What is the House of Truth? Who made it? Where did it come from? All these are very relevant questions, and we will actually be getting answers to them fairly shortly. But as you can tell, in this main central hub area, we have plenty of necessities just waiting for us to use. Well, you already saw that status recovery point. And it seems like down these stairs is nothing really important, but we do want to keep track of the fact that there are some explosive boxes over here. And as you can see there, it does draw our attention to that uh, the fact that fire will indeed set off flammable boxes, so we are continuing to learn science as we progress through the game. But down the adjacent set of stairs, we actually find some other important items of note, such as a save point, guarded by two angry bears. And we also find yet another hole, which I am just going to quickly pop into, so we can change our outfit really quick. Actually, do like the fact that each one of these holes has a individual little comment about the repugnant smells and stagnant air that always seems to be circulating out of them. But out of that bloody gown, I decided to switch into the alternate form of Fiona's primary outfit. The only major difference is that her hair is down and her shoes are off. I definitely was not kidding when I said that this particular environment is incredibly twisted. <coughs> Figures and arms just are embedded into the rocks themselves. Sometimes you'll find just a corpse laying on the ground. It seems less like a crypt itself and more just like an art gallery of human remains. And even though this initially seems like a dead end, there is an actual usable item down here that we need. As opposed to the silver disc or the bronze figurine we found, we're actually going to be finding a use for the golden candlestick fairly shortly. Also, make sure never to kick open that particular vase because there is a nasty luminescent waiting in there. Who's there? 
poor Fiona. Ricardo put you through quite a bit, didn't he? Unlike Ugo, he was always a troublemaker, a bad apple. I, Aureolus Lorenzo Belli, created them both, Ricardo and Ugo. She stole Ugo away from me. <laughs> of course, and then you came along, my dear. My dear Fiona. Fate brought you back to me. And now, you are mine. All mine! <laughs> <laughs> and say hello to our final stalker of the game, Lorenzo, or Orialis or Lorenzo Belli, creative uh creator of our father, creator of Ricardo and I think Daniela. You know what? I'm really tired of running. So let's take out all of our frustration, our angst, all of our pain that we've had to deal with. And also, let's just go ahead and farm some items off this really despicable old man. Yeah, even though he has been giving us the appearance of helping us throughout this entire game, he has actually had the ulterior motive of just trying to get a hold of our ass off, and hopefully trying to get it before Ricardo happens to. Now there is a more specific reason why I am making sure to beat him up, as opposed to any of the other stalkers. The primary reason is the fact that well, he actually does not cause us any panic. He is actually... just not really that imposing, as you can probably tell, since he is a crippled... really old man. Also, I felt that this actually gives us a pretty good opportunity to finally show off some of the Magnesia in action. As opposed to most of the other stalkers, Lorenzo here actually has very little means of dodging. And he will pretty much always go in a very straight line right towards Fiona. So it's actually pretty easy to set down a trap with the Magnesia. And especially with the refined Magnesia, I only think it takes about two to cause him to just go unconscious. But our secondary reason for taking him out, especially a number of times, as you can pretty consistently farm him for items, is as you saw, we just got a new piece of equipment. The Ruby Choker is one step below the diamond, and it's still fairly good, especially in the sense that you don't actually have to finish the game to get it. Even though we have beaten Lorenzo down, that does not mean that he is completely out of it. In fact, we actually have no means right now to take him out completely, and well, he is just a spry old man.
actually was fairly convenient he decided to store these explosive or <laughs> explosives right next to a wall we needed to blow up and it did give us a pretty good opportunity to apparently kill him so I guess we should just be able to make our way through the house of truth without any other roadblocks But it is definitely a hard task of keeping a good alchemist down, and Lorenzo, as you can probably assume, is not going to go down without more of a fight. Now, even though Lorenzo does not indeed have much mo- or, I guess, much in the range of attacks, that's not to say that his attacks aren't indeed dangerous. He actually does have an instant kill ability if he manages to knock you down and crawl on top of you. And I will be showing that off later, but... For right now, we do have a little bit of a puzzle to solve. It's not too, too difficult. And in fact, it's solved by a solution we've seen quite a few times, which... Just kicking. But the kicking was actually just the first step in our puzzle here. Our next step is to try to evade Lorenzo here until the machine does power down again. And we want to go ahead and get in two more quick kicks. Not a third though, we do want to save that for whenever we lure Lorenzo here onto the conveyor belt. But a word to the wise though, make sure never to have Fiona step on the moving conveyor belt. Thankfully, by this point in the game, you should be fairly accustomed to dealing with any kind of instant death traps, and hopefully you'd never want to see Fiona get smashed. But we do find the key to continue progressing. And I can only assume that we've, well, completely smashed and pureed whatever was left of Lorenzo. Thankfully, even for a eternally old alchemist, he certainly wasn't in any state to deal with us, so I think we should really have no problems getting the hell out of here. Sadly, it seems, though, that if this is the way out, we're going to have to continue solving a few more puzzles and maybe find some more items to aid us in our quests. <gasps> oh, you 
You've been very naughty, Fiona. You're causing me much grief. What are you doing, Fiona? Just where do you intend to run? How adorable you are, Fiona! Or maybe Lorenzo wasn't the final stalker we actually had to deal with. Oh, how I love the Azov! I can see you clearly from here, Fiona. Well, if you can see me, maybe I just have to hide. Do you really think you can hide from me there? You simply cannot understand. Well, no, I don't really understand. This tactic seems to have worked plenty in the in the past. I don't see why it would stop now. Why must you run from me? Oh, there's another door. Maybe it's an actual way out. <laughs> Looks like a dead end here. How unfortunate. Everything I do is for the great truth. <laughs> that was a close one, eh, Fiona? Yeah, this particular room isn't so much a puzzle as it's just a bit of a waiting game. You just kind of have to patrol around the room, triggering things here and there. At last, you are mine, Fiona. Until the game just kind of runs out of all the dialogue from this creepy narrator. Have you longed for me as I long for you? My dear Fiona. Still leaves in the question. Who it is that's even speaking to us right now? Come to me, Fiona. Come to me, Fiona. Well, with little other option, I guess we just have to investigate. The great Oriana's belly once said, the most valuable thing in this world is the great truth. We must dedicate our lives to the realization of the truth. Uh, Fiona. No. My Azoth. Come to me. Come to me. Well, I think before we go investigate whomever it is that's talking to us, I think this is actually a fairly good stopping point for right now. So hopefully you'll join me next time as I think we will be wrapping up the game and seeing what happens to our dear Fiona. <laughs>